Dan Sullivan is an 80-year-old entrepreneur from the US. He's currently ranked number one on the Rejuvenation Olympics leaderboard. His epigenetic speed of aging test averages only 0.71, which isn't the lowest score, but he's got the lowest score based on the relative difference adjusting for chronological age. Julie Gibson Clark is ranked number two with an average score of 0.665, which is lower than 0.71, but she was 53 years old at the time of the tests, whereas Dan was 78. It also kind of shows that the leaderboard is quite outdated as Julie is now 55 and Dan is 80. To be honest, we don't really know how the Rejuvenation Olympics team is making these calculations and how do they adjust it for chronological age. But I do think that it's interesting to look at what these people are doing to get good results with these tests. In this video, I'm going to look at what is Dan doing for his longevity. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Dan Sullivan is an entrepreneur and business consultant. He's the founder of Strategic Coach Inc. and he's been in the field for 40 years. Dan has made the goal for himself to live until the age of 156, which he's written a short book about. He came to that number because of wanting to live through the entire 21st century, as he's born in 1944. I'm going to give you the main principles of his routine. Dan exercises first thing in the morning for 80 minutes before anything else. He alternates between interval training, weightlifting, and stretching. Sometimes he goes harder, sometimes easier. His goal is to burn 1000 calories before breakfast, and this enables him to worry less about what he eats. His diet consists of a lot of greens, vegetables, fruits, and proteins such as fish and meat, but he doesn't have any other restrictions on his diet. I guess that it means if he wants to eat bread or pasta, he'll eat it as long as he has exercised for 1000 calories, and he's getting his protein for the day. For the record, burning 1000 calories is quite a lot, and it's very hard to reach such a high calorie number. For example, if I do zone 2 cardio for 60 minutes, I'm burning about 650 to 700 calories. And lifting weights typically burns fewer calories than that. So it might be that Dan is overestimating the amount of calories he's burning, but if he exercises for 80 minutes, then he's generally going to burn, yes, maybe around 600, 800, and in some cases up to 1000 calories if he's really going at it. Dan's a wealthy guy, so he uses different novel medical and exercise equipment, like the Vasper machine. It's an elliptical machine that cools down your muscles with tubes wrapped around your limbs while you're exercising. It's like blood flow restriction training with immediate cooling. The pitch is that based on the technology, your body gets a 60 minute workout in just 20 minutes. Now, I don't think that there is any evidence to support these claims, but I have tried the Vasper machine myself, you know, at least once or twice, and it's interesting, but I don't think it's going to replace regular weightlifting or it's not even like superior to regular blood flow restriction either, in my opinion. So you definitely don't need to do this. You can achieve as good results and even better with regular exercise. Dan lifts weights, but he says he takes peptides and other rejuvenation therapies to help with his longevity goals. He's also interested in other rejuvenation therapies like stem cells, hormone replacement therapy, mitochondrial therapies, and others. I haven't found any information online about the specific supplements or the specific peptides or other protocols that he's doing. Dan's doctor is David Hasse, who's a double board certified physician who probably prescribes his medical protocols. Next, Dan also meditates in the morning. He's been doing it for 47 years and he says it sets him up for success every day. I think meditation can be very powerful for remembering your goals and also increasing your mindfulness in the process to actually achieve those goals. You're going to make better and healthier decisions in your life because of this increased self-awareness. I have done meditation in the past, I'm not doing it right now because I feel I'm already you know, at this level in terms of my mindfulness and self-awareness so I don't need to kind of do it again. In his book, Dan writes about his three crucial daily capabilities that enable him to live longer. They are friends, money, and purpose. Dan says it's important to have close relationships with friends, but not only with people of your age. He says that if all your friends are your own age or older, you start dying because it's depressing to see them die. There is actually animal research indicating that there might be some truth to this. Dan has a rule that he never drinks alone. If he has a drink, then he always does it with a friend or family member. This minimizes unnecessary alcohol consumption and also enhances the relationships with his friends. Of course, you don't need to do that and alcohol in of itself isn't healthy, but I do think that it's healthier to drink with friends rather than to drink alone. The second thing on Dan's list is money. 
Without money, other people have to support you and you feel dependent. For his plan to live to 156, Dan needs money to take advantage of every new healthy opportunity or new medical therapy that comes. I definitely agree that it's going to be the case over the next few decades that if you do have money, then you will be able to get access to these new medical technologies and better healthcare that uh, potentially could extend the human lifespan. Maybe in like 100 or 200 years, everyone will just be able to get access to these uh, rejuvenation therapies. But, you know, in the next few decades, they're going to be much more expensive than the average person can afford. And the third category is purpose, which means having something to live for. It's necessary to have something that keeps you going. For Dan, he can't imagine having a sense of purpose without relationships. So he wants to keep himself engaged in the lives of his friends and family until Till the day he dies. He doesn't plan to retire and he says that retirement becomes less important in the 21st century. Instead, he thinks if you're an entrepreneur, then you never stop being useful and you can always find something to do that keeps you engaged and gives you purpose. I agree with that as well. Having a sense of purpose is very consistently linked to longevity and increased life expectancy. But that purpose doesn't have to be work. It can be family, it can be friends, it can be pets, it can be religion, it can be any other sense of purpose or anything else. You just need to have a reason to want to stay alive. And the people who don't want to stay alive, then they're more likely to die as well. So that is Dan's routine in a nutshell. Of course, we don't know what the long-term implications of his test results are. We have no data indicating that having a slower speed of aging test or ranking number one on the Rejuvenation Olympics leaderboard is somehow going to make you live longer. There is data that having a lower score is linked to a lower risk of all-cause mortality, but uh, there's no data that is going to actually you know, make you live to 156 years of age. The current human maximum lifespan record is 122, but this is expected to be broken later this century. That someone who's going to break this record is expected to be a South Korean woman, but who knows what will happen. Maybe it's gonna be Dan. If you want to get my free longevity training, then check out the link in the description or head over to seamland.co forward slash longevity dash training. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.